Go do some recruiting. What is this place? It's the headquarters of the Justice Society of America. What is all of this? Each of the JSA members had abilities, powers, tools, like your cosmic staff, and they used them to protect the world against people like Icicle. Who's that? Wildcat. His real name was Ted Grant. Power Man. The Flash. Dr. Fate. They were my friends. My family, really. Is this thing real? Court, these guys... I mean, they were the best in the world. But still, with years of experience, they couldn't defeat the Injustice Society. Do you understand that? This stuff shouldn't be sitting here, collecting dust. It should be in the hands of possible heroes. Don't touch the Thunderbolt! That's the most dangerous thing in here. A pink pen? Hey, will you just listen to me for once? Everything in this room is dangerous, all right? This life is. Let's go. Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This is going to be my new Justice Society video. They just teased a whole bunch of new characters coming to the show, including Green Lantern, new version of The Flash with Jay Garrick's helmet there, and a new version of Dr. Faith. So we'll break it all down. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We'll do a new Amazon giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and let me know which new character you want them to introduce on the show. So I'll explain what's going on in these scenes, where they're headed with this, then I'll explain the powers that each of these items and the armors grant. Just starting at the beginning, Luke Wilson's character, Stripes, as he's known now in his upgraded mech suit, is giving Stargirl a short history and tutorial on the Justice Society. She's Starman's secret daughter, which is why she's able to wield the cosmic staff. Then you get a better look at all the weapons, the armor, the magical items from the final roster of the Justice Society. Some of them were confirmed dead in that first episode. I did a video for their final battle with Icicles in Justice Society, so I'll link that video at the end of this. But in order of appearance, she snags Wildcat's costume, Our Man's armor and power hour weapon. In the comics, he took pills, but they might just change that and connect his power-ups to the hourglass that he wears around his neck. She snags Alan Scott's Green Lantern battery. She doesn't take Hootie the Owl, but she does take Dr. Midnight's armor, and the owl is connected to Dr. Midnight, so the owl will probably just follow whoever gets the armor. She takes Johnny Thunder's Thunderbolt. I'll explain how that works in a second, too. She also sees Dr. Fate's Helmet of Fate is in the hall and Jay Garrick's Flash Helmet, implying that they're either retired or they died in that final battle or they're hiding out somewhere. We did see Jay Garrick's helmet in the rubble of that big final battle with the Injustice Society in episode one. So it's implied that he died, but we're not quite sure what happened to Alan Scott. It's implied that he's dead. It's also implied that the last Dr. Fate died too, but they could be hiding out somewhere in town. So all these scenes are just letting us know the new versions of the characters are going to debut, unless some of the classic ones we didn't witness die on screen come back. Like a new version of Green Lantern, I'll explain how that works in a second too, because Alan Scott did have children in the comics, some of you probably know who they are. Or a new version of The Flash, although that's a bigger question mark because technically Jay Garrick doesn't have children in the comics, so I'll talk about The Flash during this too. Then once the new version of the Justice Society team forms, they'll start using the Hall of Justice again as their home base, unless they blow this up at some point too. 
but explaining how all these most powerful weapons, magical items, and armors work. So Alan Scott's Green Lantern battery in his Green Lantern ring came to him very differently from the modern day Hal Jordan Green Lantern, but he's still a member of the Green Lantern Corps. His Green Lantern battery was made from a fallen piece of meteor rock that came from the planet Oa, the home of the Green Lantern Corps, and the battery just acts like a portable version of the larger Green Lantern battery on Oa where Hal Jordan and the other Green Lantern Corps charge their rings. The battery itself was sentient and it instructed Alan Scott how to forge his own Green Lantern ring, so his ring didn't come to him from someone else the way that Hal Jordan got his ring from Abin Sur. For the most part, Alan Scott's Green Lantern abilities were the exact same as any of the other Green Lanterns you've read in the comics like Hal Jordan, Jon Stewart, but in the comics, Alan Scott had twin children, Jade, a girl, and Obsidian, a boy. If Alan Scott really is dead on the show, as they're kind of implying here but not confirming, my assumption would be that they introduce his children and they take the mantle. Their comic book powers work a little bit differently though. Jade and her brother were both separated at birth and given to foster care because their mother was a split personality superhero and they feared that they would be killed and that kind of goes with the theme of the show. But Jade was actually born with Green Lantern powers biologically. The same powers that Hal Jordan, the other Green Lantern Corps, need their rings for. So she can fly, she can create constructs without the need of a ring. You may remember that they actually did a version of Obsidian on Legends of Tomorrow's Justice Society. He was played by Lance Henriksen, but it was a different version of the character and it was a much older version of the character in present day. As for Dr. Fate, everyone pretty much knows how the Helmet of Fate works. Anyone who wears the helmet becomes the next Dr. Fate because the spirit of Naboo pretty much takes over their body if they're not powerful enough to resist him. The helmet is kind of like a contract that you make with his spirit or a prison depending on how you look at it. You gain cosmic level magic power in exchange for never being able to take the helmet off. Like you're Dr. Fate for the rest of your life or until you die or someone else takes the burden from you. The spirit of Naboo is super powerful but is effectively trapped inside the helmet and it wants out so it needs someone to become his avatar, wear the helmet so that it can act in the living world. They did a version of Dr. Fate on Smallville way back in the day. There's also a new version of Dr. Fate that they're supposed to be doing during the Black Adam movie because they're doing a version of the Justice Society during that. But that's a little bit different than I think what they're doing on the Stargirl TV show. They also use Dr. Fate a lot during Young Justice. But we'll see who winds up putting the helmet on in present day. You don't need to have any magical abilities to wear the Helmet of Fate. Even the Wally West Flash wore the Helmet of Fate briefly during Young Justice. Because once you put it on, you basically become the Avatar of Naboo, fused with his god level powers. Also fun fact, the original Naboo, when he was still alive, was actually the son of Vandal Savage, who was also a member of the Injustice Society in the comics, so maybe they can use a new version of Vandal Savage on Stargirl in the future if they kill off some of these Injustice Society members. They haven't really explained how this version of the Flash got his powers, Jay Garrick. As you can see, it's not John Wesley Shipp's Jay Garrick, but if they're going with the original Golden Age origin, he actually got his speed in a funny way. He was inhaling hard water vapors. Make all the memes you want. Those supposedly activated his metagene and that's how he got his speed. But that's the Golden Age origin. Once they came up with the concept of the Speed Force during the modern age of comics, they sort of retconned that and now Jay Garrick got his speed from the Speed Force. So we'll see how they try to explain that on the TV show because Jay Garrick didn't have any children so I don't know if somebody's going to be taking his helmet or just becoming a new version of the Flash. There are a number of candidates. They could do a version of Wally West. They could do a version of Liberty Bell. They could do a version of Jesse Quick. There have been a number of female speedsters and other speedsters on the Justice Society in the comics. I think they're trying to do different versions of the Flash on all the different TV shows. So I'm expecting a slightly different character that we haven't seen before, a different member of the Flash family. The whole thing with Johnny Thunder's Thunderbolt pen, the pink pen that they kind of make fun of during the episode here, is that it contains the genie known as Thunderbolt. That's why it's called the Thunderbolt. It's the most dangerous thing in here. The genie has super powerful magic reality warping abilities. It can give off big energy blasts, invisibility. It has powers of flight. So it's sort of a catch-all in terms of what they can do with it on screen. We'll see who they wind up giving the pen to. Wildcat and Dr. Midnight don't really have any natural powers. Wildcat is just a heavyweight boxing champ of the world and a badass fighter who knew how to take a beating. And Dr. Midnight was just a scientist who built special goggles that gave him really good night vision and he was really good at building explosives. They've already introduced some of the new versions of the Justice Society characters. You actually saw them during Crisis on Infinite Earths. This them in this roster here. So for instance, like we don't see a version of the new Green Lantern here. They might debut that person either at the end of the season or in season two, just because I don't think they want to load up on too many characters in season one. 
But let me know in the comments, what do you want them to do with the new version of Green Lantern on the show? And what do you want them to do with the new version of The Flash that they introduced on the show? What'll happen is, is I'll keep doing videos for like the really big Justice Society stuff and the really big comic book characters that they introduce. So leave all your big questions and your video requests for the show in the comments below. Everyone click here to rewatch that huge opening scene battle between the Justice Society and the Injustice Society. And click here for my brand new WandaVision Marvel trailer video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. I'll see you guys tonight.